Hi, everybody. How's Hi. it going? Good. This is uh, this is the, the to, to my right is Mr. Corey Matthewson. To my left, Mr. Julian Fade. Uh, we are here to do a TEDx RFT. The RFT stands for Rapid Fire Theater, which we are both a part of. Yes, we are. This is a different time uh, for you guys now. You guys get to sort of talk back to us. We're going to ask you for some suggestions, and then we're going to launch into what we think is going to be some really incredible. Completely improvised TED Talks. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, who here has seen uh, us do this show before? Just by round of applause. Oh, okay. okay, cool. Okay, That's good. a few nice people. Awesome, awesome. That's great. Uh, do you want to, yeah, let's. I have a space mouse from the future controlling this. Space mouse it away to the next slide. Oh, there yeah. We go. So, you know, we, we obviously, everyone here, you're here for a reason. We love uh, TED, TED Talks, TEDx, all that stuff. You're probably familiar with a lot of these sort of incredible talks uh, that, that we certainly were inspired by when we yeah. started to do this. And we were wondering what, it, what sets us apart from these talks and the talks that we've seen today. Yeah. So there's a few things. One, obviously, years of research. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they also have months of preparation. Absolutely. Often, and we've done away with post-secondary education <laughs> completely. Uh, we find them unnecessary for what we're about to do. Yeah, absolutely. This is totally made up uh, topics. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, Ted has some has some talks, right? Yeah, uh, oh. some topics that we've done in the past right. include the power of no. Yeah, uh, we've also done a talk entitled "Looking Forward to Looking Back," and my my personal favorite, yeah, uh, is uh, the little you inside. <laughs> that was a great talk. You nailed that. Thank talk. you so much. So what's going to happen is I have made ten slides for for Corey. Yeah, and I've made ten slides for Julian that he's never seen before. Corey has never seen his slides before. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to get topics from you, the audience, and we're going to try and mash that topic up with slides we've never seen to hopefully deliver to you some really inspirational comedy. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, why don't you get my topic? Oh, okay. Uh, the, there's a, oh, a, a nice notepad there. That's this is perfect. perfect because pushing limits and uncertainty is the topic of this sort of segment. Yeah. Now what we're doing is totally pushing limits and uncertainty. Julian has no idea how far I'm going to push him in the slides that I've created for uh, him. I've made you a really nice, really well put together yeah. slide deck. Not what you get. Right. <laughs> uh, so why don't you go ahead and cover your ears. Uh, yeah, do okay. Do the ear covering thing um, and I will get a topic. So what we're going to try, okay, good. We're going to try and build a real sort of style of topic. I like this idea of uncertainty. Is there something that you might be uncertain about in your own personal life that you'd like to d like sort of dive into? Sexuality. Sexuality. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, that'll be a good base. Uh, so we can start there. Uh, Corey knows very little about that, so it should be fine. Um, uh, so sexuality. Help me craft a bit of a TED Talk. About, about sexuality? About sexuality? What do your hands say about your sexuality? I want like a like a like you know, look at the tagline of that, like the like the little like the hook. What's this? Maybe ruminate on that a little bit. What do? Size <laughs> okay. What do my hands? Remember, you guys asked for this. Um, hang on, I don't want him to see this. This is a long one. Uh, okay. S size matters. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take this off so he can't see it. Leave this here for him. All right. Okay. You're, you are good. You are good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank uh, you so much, nice. everyone. I'll, I'm going to put this away for later. Yeah, you should take this too. Oh, yeah. This is so smooth. This is real smooth. Great. Uh, so this. lock up your nice fold. It Thanks. looks like a pocket square. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's how fashionable you are, that you could just throw, yeah, you're not listening, okay. <laughs> it's not worth complimenting you now. Uh, okay, so I made a crazy talk for Julia that explores like the dangers of the future. Uh, what is something like, because the, we're looking uh, through a looking glass into the future, what is something very dangerous in the future drone that you, to, a job. drone attack, what? <laughs> Getting a job? <laughs> okay, yeah? How to get rid of, how to get rid of, a crazy ex-girlfriend or boyfriend? I love that. Okay, so how many years into the future are we? <laughs> are you just saying that you need to do this right now? Is this, is that, you're just asking for advice now? <laughs> I thought this would be more of a relationship seminar. Uh, okay, so that's great. So we're, let's say, what year is it in the future? How far? 2030. 2030. So 2030, uh, and then the, t the subtitle is how to get rid of... How to get rid of Donald Trump. <laughs> All right. Uh, I love it. That's going to be absolutely great. 
Okay, my slides don't match that at all, so it's gonna be up to him <laughs> to make that totally make sense. Uh, we are good? Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, so you got yours, you're yeah, good? You're yeah. good, I got yours here. I'm gonna keep that away. So before we uh, begin, Corey and I have a little tradition we'd like for you guys to join in on. If you guys could just take a deep breath in and then lower your expectations. Uh, <laughs> if the bar is low enough, we will clear it. Just walk right over right it. Right over it. Uh, nice and easy. Okay, so ready to roll? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to put this away just so it's a little... Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen of the TEDx U Alberta audience, thank you so much for being here. Uh, one of the last speakers of this segment is Julian Fade, uh, an incredible futurist, a humanist, truly concerned about the fate of humanity. Today he is exploring the topic of 2030, getting rid of Donald Trump. <laughs> Give it up for Julian Fade, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the future is now, and I will show you how. Because right now, Donald Trump is not the president, and we want to keep it that way. Am I right? Yeah. Some of my work that I've been doing has realized that it may take until 2030 to actually rid ourselves <laughs> of Donald Trump. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is this. <laughs> We are likely to have a female president by 2030. <laughs> and I'm very excited about that, and you should be too, because the patriarchy needs smashing, ladies and gentlemen. My research has taught me that, and uh, you know, if, if online comments have taught you anything, it should teach you exactly that as well. <laughs> However, currently we are locked in the past. <laughs> All photos of all female presidents have to have this really old filter on them. I say no more. I say it's important for us to look forward to the future when this will be reality. <laughs> this is before the future. This is after. Okay. Now, of course, this is what happens if we do not rid ourselves of Donald Trump. If you think there's a lot of trash on TV now, just wait. <laughs> oh, you just wait. Thank you, yes. Let's hear it for trash on TV. <laughs> but my colleagues and I hopped in what we call the future machine. It's our own brains. <laughs> what we saw may surprise you. <laughs> but in order to get Funding for our research, we needed to sell she sells by the seashore. <laughs> because a lot of America's funding models are completely broken, and, and getting funding was not easy for research that we felt was incredibly necessary. <laughs> but I want to be sure to sh also shout out any seashell that may see itself as a different species or, 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 or gender. So in this, in this case, I've included he shells and she shells. <laughs> but all can be purchased down by the seashore. <laughs> now this, seeing this and seeing the difficulty we've had in getting Donald Trump out of our lives, maybe you can you crawl up inside a small shell yourself and just live out like a hermit. You don't have to. Because I'm happy to say that we've developed something that will greatly speed up this, uh, getting rid of Donald Trump. And that thing is <laughs> drugs. <laughs> drugs are the only thing that until 2030 will actually rid yourself of Donald Trump. I'm sorry to say he is here to stay unless you yourself are way far away. <laughs> and that's a rhyme, so it has to be true. <laughs> Now, you may, you may feel turbocharged. You may feel like, I can't keep living in this world until 2030, but I'm telling you that you have to because the other, the other option shouldn't be an option at all. We subjected one of our lab assistants to seven years of Donald Trump footage straight. <laughs> we did not get ethics approval for this. <laughs> this is what he looks like today. His eyes are just glazed over as he circles toward the future. But he also looks like this. <laughs> he keeps evolving and de-evolving into a gorilla, cyborg, human with 
no skin. It's very scary. The side effects of Donald Trump are numerous and they are real. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do... <laughs> Juggling with your, own, with your own life? Do you want to ride horseback into the sunset by taking drugs that will help you to see the future right now? And I'm telling you that the future one day after 2030 is bright. It is as bright as ever. That sunset will be so close to you, you won't even be able to see anything else. You will ride off with your horse and your fear right, right beside you. Because <laughs> you will never rid yourself of fear. That we need to be fully aware of. Fear will always be with us, but we can use fear. We can harness fear. We can put a harness on, on fear just like we can put a harness on a horse, and we can ride that fear into the sunset. <laughs> where we will finally, finally, just, just be as happy as a couple of bulldogs on the beach. Thank you. Julian Fay, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh. Did you source Reddit? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You go. Oh, you head off that way. I'll introduce you. All right, all right. Yeah. That's Kings great. 2016 on Reddit. Uh, all right, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited uh, for our, our final performance of this block. And you should be excited, too. You should be overjoyed, in fact. You should be exploding with joy. <laughs> our next presenter is like Viagra. He'll never let you hang in the balance. <laughs> he is a man that has been studying things that all of us wish we knew more about. Things that are uncertain to us. Things like our very own sexuality. Oh. <laughs> In his incredible talk, what do my hands say about my sexuality? Size matters. Please put your hands together for Mr. Corey Matthewson. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll start this talk as I start every day, deep in the bush. <laughs> where we emerge like evolved humans. We may be wondering what evolutionary advantage we gain from big hands. We may be wondering how dirty I was trying to be with that earlier joke. <laughs> and I'll tell you, not very dirty at all, but after saying it, it left a sour taste in my mouth as well. <laughs> now I've done an amazing amount of research with my colleagues across North America, exploring the idea of what your hands say about your sexuality. And we've come to one conclusion, that size matters. I'll take you back to some background research that we did. <laughs> we started by looking at the numbers. <laughs> all the numbers possible. We just <laughs> laid all the numbers out on a grid and just explored the idea of numbers in general. <laughs> what we found was that the average was zero. <laughs> it's just a mathematical tr tr truth. But there is a huge amount of variance on that mean. The standard deviation is wide, extremely gaping wide. <laughs> what? No, I, I, it's okay, you're right. And I want to tell you that that size, that variance actually matters. What we gain from being different sizes actually gives us some advantage. Humans didn't evolve because we were the smartest, because we were the strongest. We evolved because we were so different. We were as different as, well, we were as different as this. We were as different as this image's metaphor, which is balancing a speared potato over a calculator with a stack of euros. I'll let you dig into this a little bit more, and I think it explains itself. <laughs> you can see how our research evolved from the numbers up to something a little bit more amazing. What we found uh, is that the full uh, magnitude was somewhere near three billion. That was calculated on a small handheld calculator. <laughs> and that blew away me and the researchers that I was working with. We all thought that size wasn't something that mattered. We, a small team of scientists, didn't think that size mattered until we encountered this. <laughs> we 
We had been trying to look so far, but we couldn't see anything because we were blind. The glasses we were wearing were not looking at the right things because our eyes weren't faced the, wrong, the right way. They were faced the wrong way. And you can't see that size matters if you're not looking at the right outcomes. The outcomes, of course, that we were looking at were this. <laughs> Modeling the human face. As good as we could, we tried to explore the idea that everyone's face comes back to a base model, but it doesn't. The size of each of our faces is different, and I challenge you to try that. Put your face up to, against someone else's face. <laughs> Feel free to do it right now. Yeah, you're doing it in the back. That's great. Oh, don't look back there like you're too embarrassed to do it. Just do it yourself. You'll find that your face is different. Mine and Julian's is different. <laughs> See? And size matters, but it doesn't matter in the way you think. Bigger isn't always better. In fact, sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes it's what comes out that matters. And that gave us a very strong idea. The idea that that gave us is that we should look past the idea of size and look into something. Is this the same slide again? You went back. Oh, I see. And look into something. I gotta like Doppler effect it. Look into something more amazing. Look into something that we experience every day in the future. Every day in the future, you'll be wondering, am I just an individual in this future? Or are there others around me that'll help support me? Am I one or am I part of many? And I'll tell you, winter. <laughs> Does winter think that it's the only season? S spring, hell. <laughs> There's 365 days in a year, but the seasons we experience here in Edmonton are winter, spring, and hell. But the size is what it really comes back to. The idea that our world is so big we can experience these different climates, that gave us the evolutionary advantage. That's what changed our minds. And sure, it shocked us. We saw some totally terrifying things. When you explore sexuality at this ground level, you see that your hands are really the map that you should be looking at. Your hands can point, your hands can point back, they can gesture, they can touch, they can feel. But more than anything, <laughs> we found this man. <laughs> His name is Noah Benjamini. He's a soldier for the Sahal, which is the Israeli army. Here is the most sexually attractive man in the world. <laughs> and I'll tell you that it's not because of his hands. In fact, he doesn't even have two full hands. He's only got four fingers on one and a thumb on the other. That's why he always sits in this position. But man, is he sexy. So my team and I, of course, engaged in sexual intercourse with this man. <laughs> <laughs> and we came to some very interesting conclusions. And they didn't come fast. The <laughs> it was rather slow. It was a stepwise process, <laughs> much like this progression. You, you can see the points. <laughs> it brought us all the way around to the beginning. This, of course, we all know is the refractory period, something that every human follows, regardless of size. So while size does matter, it doesn't matter amazingly. That soldier for the Israeli army showed us that we can follow along this curve and there are Places of stability in the curve. It's not just bigger is better. It's not just smaller is better. The difference in hand size is what led to a greater human evolution. We've written up these conclusions, and sure, they've been dangerous. We've gotten some flack for them. <laughs> but we know that it's at the heart of what's inside the human body that really drives us towards love. Yeah, that's true. When you look at these skeletons, do you see gender? Probably not, unless you're an anatomy major. <laughs> do you see size? Do you see the fact that one of the skeletons has eyeballs and the other one doesn't? <laughs> what stands out to you? It's that they're in love. It's that sex can happen regardless of size. So I challenge each and every one of you to while you may not have been comfortable enough to do it at the beginning of the talk, put your face close to someone at the break. 
during dinner. Try eating something together. It's a very intimate thing to do. And I promise you, you'll fall deeper in love with that individual. You'll find a deeper intimate connection, regardless of size. But where does it end? <laughs> it ends with you. Look at your hands. How big are they? Hold them up in the sky. Look around. No one's, literally no one's doing it. <laughs> Hold them up in the sky. Let me see them. It's not about the size of your hands. Look at your friend's hands. I mean, we're not done yet here, folks. Look at your friend's hands. The size doesn't matter. It does, but it doesn't. It's not the size of what's on the outside. It's the size of what's on the inside. And that's where it ends. Thank you very Corey much. Corey Matheson, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.